Hey, Brody Butler here with another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to extract a model from a background. And more specifically, we're going to look at how you actually create the selections in order to do that. And we're also going to look at creating selections um, around difficult things like hair, really fine hair strands on a model. So I'm going to show you how to do all that, and I'm going to show you how to do it without Photoshop CS5. There's some great new features in CS5 that allow you to do this a lot easier, and I'll cover those in a later tutorial. But for now, this is for the pre-CS5 users. We're going to start off with this image here um, for the first simple way to do uh, this type of extraction. And it, this applies to images that have a nice consistent plain background, whether it's just uh, a, a white or black or colored studio background, or if it's a nice blue sky or something. Here I have the blue sky. And really simple, all you need to do is go to the Select menu, click Color Range, and here we can use the tool that's given to us um, and just select the blue in the background here. And you can see when I select the blue down here in this little um, image in the dialog here, you can see as I select it, the blue that I select turns white. But you notice that it's not turning all of it white and that's what I need for a mask in order to, to extract all of that sky out and replace it with the background that I want. So what I can do is I can hold down the shift key and by holding down the shift key as I drag along what it does is Photoshop basically just remembers all the different hues of blue that I'm going over and it will essentially select a nice white background for me as you can see I now have here. And using the fuzziness slider that sort of allows a bit of flexibility. Um, it'll expand the range that's selected so you see if I turn the fuzziness right up, it's starting to select the, um, the wall down here and parts of the body. We don't want that. So I'm going to bring it back down. So I've got a nice clean white and black uh, picture there. And then I can click OK. And that's going to turn that into a, uh, a selection for us. And you can see we have the marching ants around the blue sky here. Now, here the blue sky is selected. What I want to do is I want to invert that. So I can go up to the Select menu up here and I can click Inverse. Uh, the keyboard shortcut is Shift Command I, or if you're on PC, it'll be Shift Control I. And now I've selected this wall down here. Now what I want to do is create a mask for that. So I go down in the bottom of the Layers panel here and click the Add Layer Mask icon. That automatically adds the mask for me, and it's now revealing the layer below it, which is my nice shot of the clouds, which I took one day down on the beach. And so that's a really simple way to extract a plain background. Now let's look at more difficult ways um, dealing with hair and things like that. Okay, for this next part, I'm going to change images. And this is a much better example to show you um, how we're going to extract the hair, because that's often quite a very complicated um, part and a lot of people have trouble with. So if I just zoom in here, you can see around the edge of her hair, she has a lot of very fine strands of hair that are coming out there. She has a lot of gaps in her hair because it's sort of curly. So there's a lot of that around the edges. And I'm going to show you how we can extract all that. Basically going to extract all of the, the red background or the sort of pinky, orangey background. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use the channels option in the panel down here. If you don't have it, it should be there by default, but you can go to your window menu and select channels. Now here, we can break up the image into our red, green and blue channels. And by clicking on each one, you can see that we have a red, a green and a blue. And between these three, you need to find the one that has the most contrast for the hair. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask. And a mask is white and black. Um, and white will reveal and black will hide. So what we want to do is we, in order to get a really good mask around this hair, we need to find a channel with the most contrast. It's usually the blue layer channel, I should say. And in this case, it is. Um, so what we're going to then do is we don't want to modify that because that's going to modify our image. So we can just click this and drag it down to our new icon down the bottom here, and that will create a duplicate of that layer. And you can rename it if you want. I'm not going to bother right now. And now what we need to do is we need to make the, the blacks blacker and we need to make everything else white. So we need to make this background white and we're going to need to make her hair all black. So we have a black and white image and that way we can use it for a mask. Now, the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to bring up the levels by hitting Command-L or Control-L if you're on PC. 
And with our levels control, we can drag our sliders. We have our, our highlights, our midtones, and our shadows here. And I just want to drag this. I want to increase the contrast. So you can see by dragging this down, every, all the background's going white, his skin's going white. Um, this doesn't this doesn't matter. We're not affecting the actual image. We're just trying to create a mask. So I want to drag this highlight slider down so I have a really nice contrast around her hair. And I'm going to drag the shadows in as well so I can darken her hair down a bit. So you can see it's sort of turning into a complete black and white image. And you just need to sort of play around with this a bit until you get it about right. Now if I drag this highlight slider down too far, you'll see around the strands of hair on the outside, you'll see it's all getting uh, very messy and it's not a very good clean extraction. Um, there's sort of bits missing and there's gaps and things like that. So you can't go too far. But if we don't make all this background go white, what it's going to do is it's not actually going to hide the background. It's going to, it's going to be transparent. So we need this background completely white. But I can't drag this slider anymore down because the selection around my hair, the hair goes all funny and I really don't like it. So I need to leave it where the hair looks pretty good, which is there. You see it's all sort of in one piece. So I'm going to click OK. Now what I can do is use the dodge and burn tools. If I go over to the dodge tool, I can select up here in the range, highlights. So the dodge tool is only going to affect the highlights. Just work on a low exposure and build your way up. I can paint out here, probably a little bit more. And you can see it's starting to go white. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint around the edges of her hair. Because the hair is all very dark, it shouldn't be affected by this dodge tool because I'm only targeting the highlights. So you can see I can just sort of paint through the hair there and it's not affecting the hair too much. I'll just go around the edge because it's easy enough to make the rest of it white. We can just paint with a, a white brush. It's just these transition areas which are very tricky. This is actually quite a difficult image. Um, and it, it would be rather difficult to get a very perfect selection. You'd have to spend a little bit of time and be a lot more careful than how I'm being right now. But I just want to get this done to show you guys as an example. And I'm just going to quickly make all the rest of this nice and white. I'll probably use the brush tool and make this a bit quicker. but. So I'm making this go all completely white, so that way when we create our mask, anything that's white will probably end up inverting the mask, so everything that's, that's white here will probably end up being black, and of course in a mask anything that's black will just be um, basically um, transparent, and anything that's white will reveal what's under the layer, what's on that layer. And you can see I can go right up to the edges of her shoulder because she has this dark sort of shadow on the shoulder. I can go around with the dodge tool and get a really nice selection around the edge of her skin. That's a really cool trick. Very little bit tricky here on her chin though because she has such a highlight on her chin. I have to be very careful that I don't stuff up that part of the mask. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now what I need to do is I need to fill in the rest with black. That's everything that we want to keep. So I'm actually just... Um, before I do that, I'm just going to select the burn tool. And up here, I'm going to select shadows for my range. And I'm going to do the same thing going over the edge of her hair. And I'm going to burn all of the hairs. I probably should have done this before I did the highlight one, actually. It's probably uh, stuff up on my behalf. Because uh, you can see the, the dodge tool is gone and it's just it's removed a few bits of hair here and there. and. Um, it probably would have worked better if I did actually burn the, the hairs out a little bit first. Um, now I'm just going to use the brush tool, just hit B on the keyboard, and that selects our brush tool. And I'm going to make sure that I've got uh, black selected as my foreground colour down here. And I'm just going to paint on 100% opacity and fill in all her face. And just be very careful around the chin there. Might be a little bit out, but that's okay. This is just a Quick example. 
painting the rest of the there. Okay, so now we have a complete black and white image and you can see how we can get a mask from that. So now all I'm going to do is just hold down the command or control if you're on PC and click this copy, the, the blue copy, which is the channel that we created and just click that and you can see we have our marching ants around here. So we've created our selection. Now you can save the selection if you want. You can go up to select and go save selection and we can load it later. But you don't need to do that. All we need to do is just reactivate our RGB channel so it's all combined and you can see now we have a red mask there. Go back to our layers panel and all we need to do now is make sure we've got our layer selected which we do. All we need to do now is hit the mask key down here in the bottom and you can see we've now revealed the layer below. Again, I want to invert that because that's no good to me. I want to get rid of the background, not rid of the model. So just by selecting on the mask here and hitting Command I, that will invert that mask and just inverts the blacks and the whites. So everything that's white, you can see here, it will now reveal. Um, I'll just By holding down Alt, you can click on the mask and that will show you the mask. And there we have it. You can see around her hair, uh, we've extracted um, all the all the space around the, the hairs quite well, and it's revealing the blue sky the blue sky behind her. What you will notice though is we have this horrible red, orangey sort of tinge on the edge of all her hairs, and that's not really acceptable. So what we can do to get rid of that? Um, there's a number of things we could play around with the mask a little bit. We could feather it and do some other things like that. But an easy way to do it is just create an adjustment layer. I'm gonna create a hue saturation adjustment layer. And in that adjustment layer, I'm gonna target the reds. And I'm gonna pull out the red, the saturation of the red, until it starts to disappear in the hair. And then I'm also gonna target Magenta. I think there's a bit of magenta in there as well. And I'm just going to pull that slider out as well. And maybe make it a little bit darker. Now you're looking at the whole image and going, oh, what are you doing? What we're going to do is use this mask here. All adjustment layers have a mask. So that gives us the ability to paint in only the areas we want affected. But what I'll do first is I'm going to invert this to black. So I'm just going to hit Command I on the mask, Control I if you're on PC. So that inverts our mask to black, and now we see everything underneath. That this adjustment layer is having absolutely no effect whatsoever. But now, if I change my foreground color to white, it, it already is white. All good. When I paint white, you will see that it starts to reveal the hue saturation adjustment layer which I have created, and it takes the red out. So I can just go around the edges here carefully and paint away all that red tinging, fringing I should say. And I can just go around the edges and remove all that horrible red magenta sort of tinge that's in there. And there you go. Now you could go a lot further with this image if you wanted to. Um, you see on the left hand side here, um, just within the hairs here, it's not quite see-through to the, the blue sky. Um, but that's only because of our mask. We can actually change that thanks to the fact that we, we have a mask. So by clicking on your, your mask layer here, and make sure you click on the actual mask, not on the, on the layer itself. Click on the mask and using your brush tool, we can paint with black. And let's say you want to get rid of these hairs in here altogether. We can just paint with black and we can remove all those because it's just a mask. You can go ahead and make sure you've probably got a nice soft brush and just gently remove a lot of all these stray hairs. And you could have done this beforehand when you're in the channels, um, when you're using the channels if you wanted to, um, but you, or you can do it after, it's up to you. That's basically how you do complicated selections um, with hair. So I hope that helps you guys. Thanks for watching and check out my blog at brodybutler.com where I'll post a couple extra notes about this tutorial. See you next time.